going to talk about the good stuff, the stuff that you've been doing the rounds, but as usual, you've come to my little podcast last because the main event is always last, over in 80 minutes. Here we are. So, no woman, no try. Where did the first idea for this come about? Was it straight on following from the I'm Enough movement or was there a bit of time? Did you talk to O2? Did your boss go, you're pretty dab hand at this stuff. Let's let's give you let's give you the keys to the kingdom and see what you can do. Or was it did um, Amazon no, come so, to you? Tell no, me, I'm going to stop asking you questions. You tell me. Uh, <laughs> so, first of all, O2 had no input in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a completely separate project. I hadn't joined O2 at the time. Oh wow! I joined them shortly after, but wow. um, so it kind of it was like a developing idea. I knew from August when it happened that we'd had this big moment we'd had this impact it clearly resonated with women regardless of sport regardless of rugby and and that was incredible and there we knew there was something in it you know um but a movement like that is exactly that it's only a movement on social media it stays very much in that echo chamber um of the people it empowers because of the algorithms you know it goes to the people that are going to like it the most it doesn't necessarily go to the people who actually need to hear it um and all, all i could really sit and think was well uh, all of these women resonate with this conversation, completely agree with with equaling lived experiences that explain exactly these feelings and these emotions. But the people who have their finger on the money, the people who make these decisions do not follow me on Instagram. I preach like they do, don't get me wrong, but and I will never stop doing that, but they don't. And they are very unlikely to see or hear this message or they might get it a brief glint of it, but they won't really get the whole thing. So how do we take it and how do we translate it to those people so they will see it they will hear it they'll want to be better because of it um and that kind of idea september october november so that probably developed over like three months i knew there was something in it but i didn't really know what it was and then um over time i was like well if you pick a demographic this is a marketing brain in me i can figure demographic of people i'm really trying to reach Mm -hmm. it's going to be people who probably watch tv right it's not going to be it's not the people following me on social media because we've done that so how do we reach the people who are probably sat at home in the evenings watching the TV, might be watching streaming platforms, might be watching Sky, all that kind of stuff. We've got to put something on the TV then, haven't we? Something they're going to watch. And that's really where that idea developed from. How do we take that message and translate it into um, an hour long film length uh, piece of information, documentary that we can we can share and something that's emotive and emotional and and, and, and empowering. There's like, again, there's no blame there's no finger pointing look decisions have been made mistakes have been made things have been always been done the right way but we sit here and complain about it no one's going to listen mm-hmm. how do we tell the stories that very much transcend rugby and sport and speak to these collective experiences um and c- can empower mostly men to also be part of that conversation that was it you know that was the aim and i knew by putting women in, from rugby on the tv that would empower other women that would empower girls that would that would empower the next generation of athletes just because they could see them that's visibility solved right there mm-hmm. um well not solved but you know what i mean that's a that's yeah. an, another step towards more visibility um but access and funding come from people who make these decisions far more than I, you know i can so i was like well mm-hmm. what can i do i i i can make i can make a film so i can find people that can make a film that's what i can do uh, I can't play for England and use that platform. I will not stand at Twickenham in an England shirt singing the anthem in front of 80,000 people. That's just not me. I won't ever have Shauna Brown's platform, but I, I can do what I can do. So um, let's give it a go and just see what happens. Um, I found some guys, Ben and Jack, who have been integral to making this. They are the reason it, it went from an idea to a film. Um, and they were on board from day dot. I met them once and they said yes immediately. Well, they said yes after me talking at them for four hours. <laughs> I think they said yes to shut me up. But they said yes nonetheless. And I said, and I was like, that's it, you're done, you're in. Um, and you then, shook and the then, hand, you're in. Yeah, 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 I was like, done, I'm leaving because you said yes. Um, and that was sort of, that was how it kind of went from there, really. And um, we got people saying yes. We had people who couldn't be involved, which was a shame. Uh, unions that told their players they couldn't be involved. That's whole other conversation for another day um i think i probably know which union told you you couldn't be involved yeah well. well yeah yeah um and and that was really kind of how it how it went and wanted people that could really represent rugby properly uh not necessarily the history of rugby but the future of rugby uh it's an extremely diverse cast you very rarely find any film 
uh, that looks the way this film does. Uh, and, and that is purposely done because I can't personally empower mm. Muslim women to play rugby. I can't do yeah. that. But I can give a platform to someone who can. And that was, that, you know, that's the point. Ugo, Shauna, Z. They can empower people I can't empower. Do you want to, do you want to know what I, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you want to know what I find so empowering about what you've just said there? I was so drawn into the one message of making women feel comfortable, powerful, wanting them to get into involved in sport. I never even looked at it from that perspective because I saw so many people all wanting for the same goal. And it was, I don't know whether that's an almost a negligence on my half, but I was so drawn into everybody fighting for the same goal. I just kind of saw we are all different people all wanting the same thing here. And that's so, I mean, that's probably credit to the way you created the film. That was very well done. But <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, well, that was that was it. At the end of the day, we are all on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, I It couldn't be an all-female all talent. We had to have men included in the conversation. I've said that from the start. Men need to be part of this conversation just as much as women. It isn't a one side versus another. It's all of us together. And, and Sue, she knows everything about women's sport in general. Uh, mm-hmm. So she could bring a real insight and knowledge from what other sports do and what other sports have learned and how that translates into where rugby is as a sport um, and where women's rugby is. So, you know, it was everybody involved was really a piece of the story that, that helped build a bigger understanding of the game. And, you know, what, what Shauna says about her experiences as a kid and, and what Steph says about her experiences as a kid, most people can relate to what they say um because we've all been in situations where we don't feel we're welcome you know Steph's mm-hmm. story and I won't give it away to you who haven't watched it because it needs to, you need to hear it from her um it it's almost heartbreaking it is heartbreaking mm-hmm. we actually stopped filming wow. to, to to pause and, and and to give her some time and and then to come back and collect herself and and, and sort of start again um mm-hmm. and you see that and it will show that for a reason we show that because it's such a powerful moment and um you not everybody has maybe been through that but they have been through situations where they've been bullied for not being who society has told them to be whether it's at school or at work um mm-hmm. or on day to day life and you don't have to be female you don't have to play rugby to relate to that feeling i think that is what's the kind of the the mind changing moment yeah when you get to that you realize this isn't about women and sport this is about giving people a place to belong that's mm-hmm. what this film is about it's about empowering people to find a place that, that they want to be and, and, and mm-hmm. that they can be um because society hasn't given them one and, and as soon as you get to that feeling as soon as you really understand that deeply you get what we're trying to say this isn't women Streaming from the rooftops around how men are the worst thing in the world. This is none of that. And I think there's some apprehension, especially for men coming towards this film, is that that's probably what it's going to be. And it's not that at all. It's just about society predominantly gives women one route, and that's to be a feminine, skinny model. And that's the only way you can you can access any power and success. The reality mm-hmm. is that's not true. You can be strong and powerful and be successful. And that's what this is showing, body types. Which is which is rugby, right? It's rugby through and through. You get that. The men men talk about it all the time. Rugby gave every every guy, every size, every height, every shape, and position to exist. And somehow we struggle to translate that to, to women. Mm-hmm. Um, and we certainly struggle to translate that into a wider society and the media. So that was for me, it was like, how can I help create some visibility to, to women I couldn't see? And, and I'm sure I, there are kids feeling the way I did. You know? So it was kind of all built on that emotion um and and hopefully when kids watch it they can see somebody they could one day be if they want to be um and, and when and when men watch it in positions of power and privilege they see how they could be better and how they could affect that change so you know it was quite deep um in the end kind of i can't i can't simplify it any more than that because it really was I, I wouldn't ask you to change. that was perfect that was that was perfect thing and like you even you just mentioned it brought back the emotions i felt watching it the first time which was quite intense when you're just trying to eat a lunch on a thursday yeah, but yeah. Was... it is something you really need to focus on but um but it's, yeah it's, i've it's seen it a few times well it's even even when you're not focused on it it pulls you in is what it actually does and like you're talking about that specific moment that you do even if you are starting to wander off like for example if you're 
Skype and work and check in your phone, you do hear the change in the, the voice and the emotion come through and you do stop and go, I need to really pay attention to this. And yeah. to your point about making sure everybody can have fun as well. I remember distinctly Wales when I watched a video of Adam Jones hugging Shane Williams and that was the point I knew rugby was a sport for me because yeah. if you've got those two people playing at the highest level, like there's no reason there's no reason anybody shouldn't play rugby. Everyone should at least go and see a rugby club and get involved. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look at that. We're back. As you'll notice, there's been a quick change of clothes. We had a thing. Victoria had other commitments and I was in no right way to stand in the middle of them and we were having such a good conversation. I just was not prepared to cut the podcast short. And so she's graciously given me more of her time to take up another evening when she should be with her feet up, resting with a job well done. So, Victoria, thank you for coming back. No, thank you for um, restarting. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. So we just finished last time. We just spoke about the big emotional part in No Woman, No Try and about how it had moved everybody and how we were bringing people, actually re-engaging them almost to a second level when you already had them hooked and drawn and really pushing that power home. Now, I wanted to talk a bit more about getting the male represent representation on board you had. Obviously, Ugo was not a major part of the thing, but he was there, he was present. He has been an activist and an ally for a long time. How was it getting him involved and how did that process come about? You know, having Ugo involved was probably one of the the best things that we could do. Um, I've always said that this conversation isn't one side against another. It's both sides coming together. We need to have male voices involved in that. Um, and to, to I had an introduction to Ugo. I sent him a quick email, just very basic. Want to make a film about women's rugby? We should be involved. Um, had a chat with him, and he was just on board from from day dot. You know, there were really really no no questions, and hopefully that's because he knew how passionate I was about it and, and how much I was going to put into it. And and again, he was the same as everybody else. There was no promise of Amazon. There was no promise of you know the platform we were going to create. It was just um, where there's a will, there's a way. And he really bought into that. So yeah, to have him involved and like you say, he's a very visible male ally and the work that he does is incredible for the women's game you know he takes every opportunity to stand up and share it and did that before it was cool I guess is the best way to way to kind of do it Mm -hmm. you know he broke down a lot of those barriers and um used his platform that he has to promote the women's game and you that's kind of all you can ask from from male allies is that they they open up doors um to to uh, pools of people and, and to, to audiences that we actually don't have access to right now and, and normalizes the conversation talking about men's and women's rugby at the same time just as rugby and, and nothing else so yeah having him involved was incredible I'm so glad you said that bit then I used to in a previous job when I used to have the grace of working with some female female athletes female rugby I hate when we call them female rugby players they don't play female rugby but like that's uh, so what you say. You just we just call it rugby, and we just go. Because I was talking to somebody else. There, I was like, "Oh, are you watching the Six Nations at the weekend?" They're like, "Oh, the Six Nations is finished." And I was like, "No, no, the men's Six Nations is finished. The, the Six Nations hasn't finished." And then exactly. you're getting there. So in uh, setting up my own six. <laughs>